So this is our active learning classroom. It holds 60 students. Of course, with COVID, it only holds 22. But every table has their own monitor. So we can have GI, we can have cardiac, we can have neuro. We also have whiteboards so the students can do active learning and case studies with the faculty member. We also have, throughout the building, we have student learning spaces where they can sit and learn and work on their laptops, work together in groups. And we have many of these casual learning spaces throughout the building. So we have a break room where we have a microwave, a coffee maker, a sink. There are vending machine, pay vending machines. There's also a refrigerator that UNCG has put in that our students can use that. And there are cubby holes that they can put their materials and backpacks in while they're in here. This is the student lounge where any students from all the agencies can have lunch, they can come in and study, they can do group work, or they can just have some relaxed time. And it has really nice view of outside so they get the environment space. There's also a monitor where they can watch the news and weather or they can watch TV if they choose to do that. Or we can push out classroom space activities if they're needing to review any feedback. Here's some additional rest and social space. In addition, we have study rooms here that students can do. It's a first come first serve basis and they can just utilize them all through the day. The building is open from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. We have a Xerox room, a Xerox machine. They can do it with a private, it's pay, so they have uh, access to that. We also have a library for the students. Uh, there are four carols and some casual space to sit. There are many books in here for now, but most of our library materials are actually online. But this does give them some additional study space and some quiet space. So we also have a large tiered classroom. It holds 100. 42 people and the students the uh, tables have plugs for the students laptops and it's tiered for um, it's flat tiered so it's no steps for ADA accessibility and we made the tables so that two per tier and that way students can work together and turn around and work, do group work if they wish to do that together. Oh, we have uh, large screens that are usually down from the uh, wood panel and there are LCD, three LCD projectors so that there's ample visual acuity and availability for all the students. Also, there's wireless in all of the rooms and all the teaching stations have accessibility to also use the same or different products on each monitor and screen. And the Beeline software in our labs can be pushed out to any classroom for use in teaching or training or demonstrating. In addition, we have larger chairs and we do have handicapped spaces that for persons are in wheelchairs. We don't have many students in our programs in wheelchairs, but if someone had a broken leg or something, they can. So we have the oversized chairs throughout the whole building in every classroom and every meeting space. So this is our outdoor terrace where students can have lunch, take a break. There is no smoking in this building, however. So this is the bank of faculty offices and we share um, each floor with one of the other agencies. So half of us are on one end, half are on the other end as far as the different agencies. And that's really nice for collaboration and keeping uh, in touch with our preceptors and clinical agencies. We also have just a little waiting area here by the director's office. So when people are coming in for admissions or questions about that, we also have behind the poster of the veteran, the student record room, and that is locked. And there are very few keys to that room. Special filing cabinets left there. This is the director of the DMP program's office and she has a table where she can meet with people, uh, faculty or students. And then all the offices have filing cabinets, desk, computers, they can have more than one monitor, they can have a Vera desk and they will have a, a bookshelf also.
and everyone has a private office. Our part-time people do share. This is a typical faculty office, a little bit smaller than the director's office, but they also, most of them have windows if they're on the other side. Um, they don't have windows, but that's why we keep the doors glass. So I'm looking th directly through the door. So we designed it so we'd have open space, no closed offices. This is the faculty workspace where the printers, fax machines, Xerox machines, supplies, um, copy paper, printer, shredder, all the things they need to uh, manage the programs. And each unit has, uh, each agency has a different uh, cabinets with their locks so that they can keep their materials there. And we share fairly well. This is the faculty lounge so that faculty do have a space. There's also a big monitor here to the left that they can watch TV and they can come in here. There are two large refrigerators, stainless steel. There's a coffee maker, there's two microwaves so that they can have private space to all um, to have their lunch time and be away from the office for mental health reasons, et cetera. And there's also a small dishwasher here. So it's a bit plenty large space for the number of faculty in the building. There are 20, let's see, 42 faculty offices in the building and uh, four staff. So we have uh, insignias that we bought and purchased to all the different agencies that have faculty in the building and programs. We have that on each floor, which offices are on this floor. So this is our large health assessment lab. We have 16 exam tables that can be raised or lowered. We have otoscope and thalmoscopes, thermometers, blood pressure cuffs, gloves, hazardous waste, and we can pull the uh, screens and so the students can do practice with each other. We can bring standardized patients in here. We also use this large space for the anesthesia when they want to do the pig's feet uh, suturing or the spinal trachea uh, bovine issues when they're trying to do uh, epidurals. So we have plenty of space in here. We also have a bank of tables so we can hold 36 students in a class in here if we wish to have class in here. And they are separated right now because of COVID. So while they can plug in their laptops to each table right now, there's a few tables that don't have uh, plugs for them. In addition, there are three large monitors that the teaching station can utilize. Again, we can have cardiac, GI, and neuro on different pictures and students can be working on various ones. We have plenty of sinks for hand washing. We also have storage spaces. We also have cubbies behind the screens and sinks so that they can put their backpacks and coats and sweaters and things. In each corner, we have one unit that can be on the B line so that they can come in here and practice for feedback or for evaluation purposes. And also our uh, post-master students do their health assessment and faculty physiology course in here. They come, even though they're mainly online, they come several times a semester. Our RN to, be in, RN to BSN students also utilize this lab for their health assessment skills courses. We also have a handicapped bathroom so the students can practice um, when they have standardized patients, stroke and rehab things, they can get them in and out of the bathroom and a shower so they can also practice, especially the RN to BSN and undergraduate students, because right now undergraduates are here during the summer. Then we have, this is our clinical bed lab. So we have mannequins in most of the beds. And so our undergraduate students in the summer or RN to BSN students can also come in here. We have the standard headboard with the oxygen, the air, the vacuum, the blood pressure cuff, um, and plenty of emergency plugs. That is the, the same headboard that is used in the local health system. In addition, we have the bank of students, so we can sit 36 students in the classroom, and they have the same three monitors that we have in here, and there are computers with each of the, some of these are high fidelity and some are low fidelity um, mannequins that we can use. We do have a nexus for medication administration. It's locked in a closet, and there's also storage in both of these labs for each unit, each school, and each program. So this is a hospital bed room that has a similar type of headboard monitor for the mannequin. And also it has a big lift. So if you need to take people to the bathroom, we have that installed and you can actually put them on the lift and actually carry them into the bathroom for a bath or for other purposes for excursion. 
again, this is all wired in my mic and video for a beeline. We have control rooms with all of the rooms. This is a remediation lab where we have both an exam table as well as hospital beds, and the students can come in here on their own time and attend the school and they will uh, reserve it. We have mannequins in some of the beds that they can be taken out so they can practice skills in between before they come to lab or after they come to lab. Um, we have testing rooms, so the students need to have special needs. We do have four testing rooms available in the building so that they can um, have privacy for their learning needs. So we also have a really nice computer lab that holds 26 students plus a faculty member, and there are monitors and whiteboards and an LCD projector. So depending on if you're doing various things, you can also push the beeline from the clinical lab and demonstration out to this lab here. And then we have other students. So this is a large classroom. It holds 60 students. It has three big, large monitors, two on each side and on four, two in the middle and two on each side. There's also a teaching station and the students can plug in. We have uh, surge protectors and all because so they can plug in their laptops, but they know they have to charge their things. We also have uh, four large whiteboards. So if they want to do group work in the room, that's available too. In addition to the computer lab, we have a, a cart with 30 other computers, laptops that they can take to a classroom and utilize in case the computer lab is busy or they want to do something specifically in the room. So I like testing uh, for the anesthesia students. They pay for a specific program that, that locks out their laptops for their testing, similar to what the uh, law schools and medical schools utilize. We also have casual learning space on each on second and third floor, and there are lockers in its first come so the students bring their own locks, but then they have a place to lock up their materials when they're here during the day. And there's a bank of 200 downstairs uh, near the bathrooms. We also have an anatomage table and two large screens so you can see it. And we have it uh, glass wall so that visitors and others can see this. And again, we can push out any of the labs, materials and demonstrations directly to this. So we have a home health apartment here that has a, a separate bedroom and bathroom it is not disability oriented it's more like a normal house so we have a small kitchenette and dining room we have a living room a bedroom and a bathroom and so we can the students can come in and do home health they can do post stroke post rehab patients they can do chemo patients diabetes etc again it's all linked with audio and video to the beeline system for feedback and also to pushing out to other places in the building We also have debriefing rooms for all the simulation rooms and there's technology in each of those and large monitors so the students can utilize this for seminar and feedback sessions with faculty. We also have a nurse's station here so the students that are working in all the different simulation rooms can be just like they are. They can chart, they can collaborate with the physicians, pharmacists because we do IPE here with uh, another university and social work and nutrition and others on our campus as well as the ANT, our local HBCU. So this is our OR, state of the art, uh, lights, monitors, arms, uh, hospital bed, um, well, bed for them, and also a uh, state of the art respirator that the anesthesia students use for their practice. Again, this is on the B line, they can watch or send this to any classroom and students can actually watch their videos and feedback from off campus. And we have the mannequins we also that can work with the uh, respirator machines. We have a substerile room in here that also has a medicine cart and some other specific medication carts that they can take out and any equipment, ultrasounds, et cetera, and autoclaves. So we have a primary care suite that is consisting of four doctor office type rooms, primary care rooms with all of the materials, the otoscope, ophthalmoscopes. We have an exam table, a sink, all the hazardous waste things. We have patient and family chairs for them to sit in. 
and of course the glove boxes. We have two doors. One door in one hallway is for the provider to come in. The back door is for the standardized patient to come in so that there's no contact between them when they're doing their exams and evaluations. And behind the, behind the door is um, in the back hall where the standardized patients are, they have a lounge with lockers so they can change clothes into gowns, et cetera, or into their makeup if they have injuries and things like that. There's also space for their laptops for their charting purposes. We also have a scrub room with a large sinks for pre-op for the anesthesia students to practice and also some surge tech uh, students from some of the community colleges are here. So we have simulation rooms. There are nine, 10 simulation rooms. And this is one of the ICU ones. We also have a, a large wall, uh, accordion folding wall, so we can open them for disaster and trauma agencies. And they have all mannequins high fidelity. And there are control rooms for all these, again, so that we can record and students can utilize the feedback with all the high-tech equipment, oxygen, suction, a vacuum, et cetera, and IV poles, et cetera. We also have the cows that are similar to the ones we have in the local agents, uh, medical center agency, so the students have real-time charting just like they would in the hospital. And we have the EPIC system, just the student version. Uh, there's a firewall between this and the medical center so that they don't have access to real patient records. This is the uh, mama baby or pediatric room. We have, a, this, again, an accordion wall, but this can be for the pediatric child. Or we have a birthing mother uh, mannequin. And we have the isolate and the neonatal equipment and beds and things like that, and weight scales for our OBGYN practicing with high fidelity. Again, same similar types of room with everything included. And all is linked to the audio and video for the feedback of the students. plenty of space for sinks and supplies.